Today we're going to be talking about uh, percentage increase and percentage decrease. And you'll find that the formula is there in your packet on how to calculate it. It is one of those things where although the formula is in your packet, when it comes time to take a test, what aren't you going to have? You're not going to have the packet, so you're not going to have the formula unless you do what? Memorize. Memorize it, just like all the other formulas, right? Yeah. So, finding a percent increase or a percent decrease is done the same way. The percentage change is the amount of change over the original amount. How do you find the amount something changed? You what? You subtract. There's going to be two things that they're giving you. You're going to subtract the smaller one from the larger one. That's going to show you the amount that it changed. And you're going to divide it by that original amount. Okay? You have it. It was there in your packet. But if I were you, I'd take time to do what? I'd write it down because that's part of that memory process. And this is actually on page 141. Back up from page 141. In this problem, it says the price of a pair of shoes increases from $52 to $64. What is the percent increase to the nearest percent? Okay. What is the original amount of the pair of shoes? The original amount is $52. Everybody see that? The original is 52. How do we calculate the amount of change? I subtract. I'm going to take 64 minus 52. What is 64 minus 52? No, it's 12. I don't want to calculate this. What do I do? I divide. When you're keying into the calculator, you're going to key in 12 divided by 52. And somebody go ahead and punch that into the calculator since I don't have that number of memory. No. Okay, I'm going to write down everything my calculator says. Yeah, that's what I have. Okay. Now, it says to the nearest what? Percent. First off, this is a decimal. How do I change it to a percent?
you're on the right track. How many places do I move the decimal? Two places. So if I'm looking at it from a percentage, if I kept all the decimal places, it would look like this, yes. It said to the nearest percent. So I want to round to that one column in the percentage. I look behind it in the tenth column. It's a zero. So would I need to do anything to the three? What's this to the nearest percent then? 23%. It's a 23% increase in price. The amount of change is 12. Wait, how do you know the change is Because the original amount compared to the new amount is oh. showing that it went which way? Oh. Huh, this is percentage increase. If it's new price to the, uh, if the original price to the new price went down, it would be a percentage what? Increase. Decrease. The nice thing about calculating percentage increase and percentage decrease is, the formula is the same. Doesn't make any difference. We are going to do it the same way. The percentage change is equal to the amount of change divided by the original amount. Mm -hmm. Now, just like last time when we were working with formulas, I really recommend that until you're positive, you have this formula memorized, that every time you come across a problem that's asking you to do a percentage increase or percentage decrease, what should you write down? Formula. The formula. It's going to help you memorize that formula. And without it, you can't do a percentage increase or decrease. Pretty good? Okay. Again, I want to talk about percentage decrease. You're going to find it on the next page, but I'm not worried about whether you see where that's at. When, you, when the change in the amount decreases, you use the similar approach to find the percent decrease. Percent decrease describes how much a quantity decreases in comparison to that original amount. So the formula is still the same when you're doing percentage decrease. It's the amount of change divided by the original amount. So these two should be on the bottom of that page of, what is it, 142? Mm -hmm. Number four. The number of students in chess club decreased from 18 to 12. Percent of change equals the amount of change over the original. What's the original amount of people in the chess club? 18. How would I find the amount that it changed? 18 minus 12, which is what am I going to do to find the percent? I'm going to divide 6 by 18. Right? 0.3333333 repeating. If I change this to a percent,
If I round to the nearest whole percent, would I need to keep that 0.3? No. This would just become 33%. And it is a decrease because it went from 18 to 12. Definitely a decrease. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try to work number five out on your own. I want to come by and take a look at how you did. So number five is on that same page. Look at it. Try to work it out. And I'll come by and see how you're doing. Okay. First off, number five, using the same formula. The amount of change would have been 16 minus 10 over the original, which is 16. Almost everybody got to here just fine, without any problem. There still seems to be some confusion about how to key that into your calculator. This is read 6 divided by 16. That's exactly how you're going to put in the calculator. 6 divide 16. It comes up to 0 0.375. If I move that decimal point two places, I get 37.5%. But it says, again, if I'm looking for what they've been asking me to do, nearest whole percent, because this is 0 0.5, what's going to happen to this 7? It's going to come to an 8. So 38%. Ready, good? Am I good yet? Okay, turn to page 143. A TV has an original price of $499. Find the new price after the given percent of change. Okay. There is two methods that I can use here. I'm going to work it out two different ways. Okay. First off, I can find out how much this 10% is of an increase. And the way you do that is you take 499 times, and 10% as a decimal is 0 0.10 or 0 0.1. So I'd take 499 times 0 0.1. And if you put another 0 there, it's not going to change that. Everybody okay with what I'm doing so far? Right, because it's 10%. And to find this, you'd move the decimal two places the other way. It'd be 0 0.10. So this is going to come up to 49.90. Now, why specifically would I want the zero in this case, and I might not in some others? Anybody know? Because this is money, and I need two decimal places to keep track of my dollars and my cents. Okay. If it increased 49.90, this was an increase in price, then I would have paid 4.99, but now I'm paying an additional 49.90. What am I doing with these two figures? I'm going to add them together. Uh, 
How much does the TV cost me now? $548.90. Should be I want you to see that there's more than one way to do this problem. I often don't do this this way. If you were paying for a $499 TV set and you weren't worried about an increase or a decrease, what percentage of the $499 do you have to pay? The whole thing, 100%. If I have to pay for 100% of it, and there's a 10% increase, what percentage am I actually paying? 110%. And as a decimal, this would be 1.1 1 .1 or 1.10. OK? Everybody with me with what I did there? If it's a percentage increase, I can add the increase right to the 100% that I normally would pay. If you want it to turn a percent into a decimal, you just move it two places. You move it two places. So this 110, one, two places, I have 1.1, and I could put that N0 there, but do I really need it? Mm. Not in this case. Now I can take the 499 and I can multiply it by 1.1. And guess what it's going to give me? Now, you can either calculate how much it's going to increase and add it together, or you can show the increase in your percentage by adding the two percentages together and find out your total amount just by multiplying by that percentage. The same concept works when you go to the next problem. Everybody good with this one yet? No. So let's take a look at number nine. And again, we can do this two ways. Again, we're still dealing with a $499 TV set. This time, instead of increasing, they're going to what? Decrease. So instead of adding something, I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to take it away because it's a percentage decrease. I could find out how much it's going to decrease. Remember that 30% could be written as what? 0.30. It shows that it's going to decrease by 149.70. How would I find my price? Mm -hmm. Yes? $499 minus the 149.70. So my new price is 349 
Likewise, the other method works here as well. How much of the, of the $499 would I normally pay for, percentage-wise? 100%. If it's having a 30% decrease, I'm taking 30% off of that 100%. How much am I paying for? 70%. So I could take the 499 times 70%, which is 499 times 0.7. What could you ever do like I'd have no reason to divide. And what the what is this going to come out to? Three hundred and forty-nine dollars and thirty cents. Does it matter to me which one of the two methods you use? No. Use whichever one works best for you. I personally like the second method. That's me. But whichever one works the best for you, use it. Okay? The only time I ever use the first one is when they ask me how much was it discounted. And I know that I use this one because it tells me automatically how much it was discounted. It was discounted 149.70. Everybody good? That's your assignment.